Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. Um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. I was able to find a story from the Telegraph, and then because the Telegraph is a subscription based, I went to the Daily Mail. And yeah, Minority Report for the internet. Let's get into it, shall we? So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can read, police Twitter bots will trawl social media to protect where hate crimes will break out in the UK. The police are no longer intent or happy in their ineptitude of actually sorting out real crimes. Just ask London and, you know, literally hundreds of people that are dying a year now due to knife crimes and others that are dying due to gun-related incidents, and even people that are still being maimed by acid attacks. But apart from that, the internet is now the place in which the police are now going to try to police hate speech and hate crimes. Interesting. I didn't realise that saying something to somebody is now a crime, but Hey, let's see how this goes. So let's, let's read this, shall we? The trial of artificial intelligence is due to be launched from October 31st. So this is already in effect, apparently. This is already in effect. They are going to try and decide what tweets, what verses that you want to use and say that could be used to describe what could be a hate crime and if or when or how you would actually do this again and how many times you would do this and how this is going to interact with your criminality y yeah so it will recognize tweets that are deemed antagonistic over religion ethnicity or race interesting interesting I wonder if it would be predominantly on a Muslim faith based whether or not it would be the defamation of Christians in equal term, or whether or not it would even mention anything to do with Jews at this minute in time, knowing how the Labour Party are with this at the moment. I wonder, I wonder, I want... Well, who am I kidding? Of course I don't need to wonder. It's only going to be predicted for one aspect, isn't it? Let's be honest here. Then it will map the location hate posts are sent from to allow early intervention. Now, early intervention, you say? What do you mean by that? Well, you know that people have been caught by police knocking on the door and asking to take them to be re-educated. I wonder if that has anything to do with a intervention. But let's read the story and see how this actually comes forth and how this produces further, shall we? Let's take the time to read this through, shall we? So, police are set to launch Twitter bots that will predict where hate crimes will take place after Brexit deadline day. You know, you just have to throw Brexit in there, but basically from the 31st of October. The trial of the artificial intelligence, due to be launched from the 31st of October, will be the first of its kind in the UK. The system will work by recognising posts on Twitter that are deemed to be hateful or antagonistic on the topics of religion, ethnicity and race, as we covered before. But again, what is to be the arbiter that decides what is hateful? If I say demigrated things about Muslims, does that mean if I said the same things about Christians and just changing the word Christian to Muslim, am I going to be treated the same way as a hate crime? Or are you purposely protecting what you think are more victimhood people. If I either say the same thing to a woman as I would to a man, does that mean that I am actually going to be more prone to hate speech or prone to an intervention if I say it to a woman rather than a man? These questions and more probably won't be answered, let's be honest. So it will then pinpoint the location where the tweets were made from, 
to provide <laughs> aggregate trends in tensions over time and space. Hmm. Let's just pause right there, just for a second, because I'm not 100% sure, but let's find out what aggregate means, shall we? So, turns out, aggregate trends actually means what it kind of sounds like. It's going to put in so many different aspects, or so many different incidents, as they would call it, and add them all together to, let's say, formulate a string of history to be able to condemn the person more. Again, it all depends on what the arbitration is of what is hate speech. It really does. So the technology was developed at Cardiff University. Researchers there have proved that an increase in hateful tweets from one area of the country correlates to an increase in the number of religious or racially aggravated crimes in that area. I wonder where the should we say hatred comes from and what particular areas that they are talking about and how that correlation would actually go with the aspect of let's say hateful tweets you know people venting their frustrations or you know in general I'm not saying that it doesn't happen actual hateful comments but again hateful comments doesn't necessarily lead to them doing anything the most important thing in science that you ever learn is correlation does not equal causation. But hey, let's take that into consideration when we're going to try and re-educate people and intervene with them using AI technology to decide whether or not they might do something in the future. Again, minority report. Can I get a witness? So Professor Matthew Williams from the University of Cardiff said that the system will first be trialled by the National Police Chief Council. Brexit is one of our test cases to see if hate speech will spike. Interesting. Interesting. Why would it be a case of that Brexit would be your test cases to see if hate speech will spike? Is it that you're under the impression, the belief, that people that voted for Brexit, or in that aspect, that they would be racist or have demigration towards certain groups of people? Why isn't it that you're not focusing it on the Labour Party, for instance, and their demigration of Jewish people? Why is it that you're focusing it on a particular, let's say, political ideology at this minute in time or decision that was taken by the British people? I wonder why it's being targeted for a specific reason and for a specific, let's say, idea and how it's all come out at a specific precise moment in time it's interesting it really gets your noggin a jogging doesn't it there has been talk of riots on the streets and there is a expectation that tensions will bubble up around that date he said speaking to the sunday telegraph yeah but that has nothing to do with what you were saying that it was for there has nothing to do with the riots in the streets being anything to do with religion. It has nothing to do with anything to do with racism. It has nothing to do with sexualization or gender either. But somehow you think that this is going to be able to do anything for Brexit is all to do with the idea of democracy. The reason why people are thinking of doing the riots and whatnot and rebelling in general. And it just goes to show you again how people that are in a point of authority don't understand the level of vitriol that is coming from the common people looking at the people that are supposed to be leading us realizing that they're not leading us or representing us correctly but are actually doing what the hell they want to do but hey let's carry on and let's police this like 1984 shall we so i'll be honest i'm actually really worried about this and no this isn't about scaremongering or trying to get people to be worried about what's going on or, or, or whatnot these are just my personal thoughts and personal feelings if you have a country that is now arbitrarily intervening and deciding and dictating what you can and cannot say you're only one level away 
from being an authoritarian state. Hell, you already are an authoritarian state. The only difference is that at the moment, some people think that it's a good idea for these types of speeches to be limited. What happens when this can be expanded upon to not having any conservative views? Or let's say, for instance, that you can no longer talk about transgender issues because a very right-wing group got into power and expanded upon what these laws are already put into place for and added to it. These laws may be interesting and beneficial to some groups, but also can be expanded upon and completely and utterly demigrate any aspect of political ideology or even religiosity in any which way that the people that are in power want. And that doesn't matter if it's left or right wing at any point in time or even centrist. It comes to a point where you have to look at the laws that are coming onto the books. And you have to look at them and think, why are they coming onto the books? Why is it that certain speech is being limited? Why is it a case of now that if you're offensive in some shape or form, that you now have to go into some sort of form of rehabilitation, some sort of form of re-education idea? I, I really do understand that a lot of people are not necessarily nice people and say horrible things. But is saying horrible things, as much as it may offend you, is that something that is worth putting somebody in prison for and arresting them and putting them into a point of a criminal? Now, don't get me wrong, I understand racially motivated stuff and I understand hatred does have different connotations and there should be different laws for that sort of aspect. But again, arbitration comes into play. How do we decide what is the person that has the actual implementation of what is racist? Was it said as a joke? Who is it said with? If you take things out of context, you can turn almost anything into hate speech. Because hate speech doesn't actually have a legal definition. It's about if you think it causes offence and how it offends you. So, let's get into the actual aspect of the story. Trying to suggest that there are certain political ideologies which may be actually in case of being true that may affect different ideas and the way that people interact with each other let's go one step further let's talk about pacific let's say religious ideas that maybe push different cultures in different ways is there a fact of being able to say for instance that if we start hearing certain people say white whore devil sluts things like that 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 classifies is that would classify as a certain amount of hate speech. Or does that mean that that certain demographic is protected and can't ever do anything for hate speech? The ambiguity that comes from this definition of hate speech just doesn't cut it. It doesn't seem to be able to give equilibrium. Now, if you have aspects that you want to protect people from white nationalists, fine, I'm with you. I understand that. I'm completely with you on that. But if it comes to a point of other people that are literally coming out of their ideology to say that they want to rape certain children, and no, that doesn't necessarily mean from one particular ideology, but let's use that as an example, why is it a case that that wouldn't be classified as hate speech, and why can't they be put under the laws of hate speech as well? Why is one race supposed to be better at hate speech and the other one isn't? Why are you giving them so many differences? That's where my problem actually lies. The fact that I don't think that this will be put into implementation equally. I don't think that it will be treated equally. I think it will target certain people. Again, my own personal opinions. What do you guys think about this? Is this a good idea? A bad idea? Do you think it helps people or hinders people in the ideas of expressing themselves? Whatever way that you do think, if you did like the video, please like, share and subscribe to the video, to the channel and help whatever way that you can. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to listen and to watch this video. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you all again very soon. Take care. Goodbye.